Hey guys, do check lifestyle here back from another video. The reason why we have such issues in our world today is because the things that have been taking place for quite some time now, for about 20 years, 25 years, uh, have led us to this moment here where this young lady here, a uh, pro-Palestine protester, has no clue why she is protesting and then asks her friends why they are protesting who has also no clue. And this person is still wearing a mask. It is not this young lady here. I will play you the clip in a minute. I also have a clip to play you where uh, a, a, a guy um, speaks uh, literally on how they have come, how the world has come to, come to this place, and in particular America. He breaks it right down, and he, he, he it's quite funny how you think it, how it's how what he what he when he when you listen to what he says you'll understand exactly what he means and it, and he's talking about the point where it takes up to 25 years to break a, 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 a system down they don't they call it a mind virus as they call it they don't need to uh, um you know do the literal virus they can do a mind virus and, it, and they attack the schools the education system and this is where why we are at this point today anyway guys if you like this kind of content please do like and subscribe take care of yourself digital lifestyle out uh yeah watch to the end yeah and what would you say is the main goal with tonight's uh protest i think the goal is just showing our support for palestine and demanding that nyu stops i honestly don't know okay. all of what nyu is doing is there something that nyu is doing i really don't oh. know i'm pretty sure they're do you know what NYU is doing? About what? About Israel. Why what? are we protesting here? Uh -oh. yeah. Palestine will be free! I you... wish I was more educated. I'm not either. Oh. I came from, I came from Columbia. I was there up at Columbia and we came down. They said NYU students needed our support. So I came down. I heard there's lots of cops. Some people were saying it was getting dangerous. What do you mean by Ideological subversion is, is the slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, активные мероприятия in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interests of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years, actually it's overfulfilled because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his balls, then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation of demoralization. Well, I think, I think the point at which the degree to which we can tax our population um, is uh, our, basically ta is eclipsed by the amount of our interest on our debt basically makes us a Ponzi scheme of some sort. And uh, I think that's the point. I think it's very hard to pick that spot. Um, there's a long, long history. This is one of those things I wish, I think our 
we're, our leaders, our government are kind of in this teenage state right now. There's this long history we can rely on for a more mature view of how things work. And I think there's a long history of governments lasting a whole lot longer than they should. And, you know, a lot that we'd rather not have happen. Certainly all the dictators seem to get it done. So um, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's difficult to time that very precisely. I think we'll have a warning, though. I think a smart analyst, or, for, or I shouldn't say that, because I don't even think I'm so smart. I was definitely 50th percentile here at Vanderbilt, no higher. <laughs> um, I think if you just pay attention, you'll get a warning sign. Heck, you know, when I figured out the subprime thing, I had to do it off human behavior and, and various <laughs> sources of witchcraft wizardry in the in, in 05. By early 06, it was apparent in the actual filings that were being made every month. And you just had to look at that, and it was really easy. And so I think you'll, you'll see that. If you're thinking, oh, one day a treasury auction will fail, and then I'll have, you know, I don't think, see that happening, because I think we have enough domestic consumers of debt, including, including the Fed, but including our military pensions, whatever, Social Security, et cetera, that it's too easy for the government to hide that. And I don't know that you can wait for that. The $2 trillion crypto industry is refusing to back down in its bitter battle with SEC Chief Gary Gensler and the Security and Exchange Commission over the regulation of digital assets. So the U.S.'s largest crypto exchange, Coinbase, has filed an appeal in a Manhattan court to resolve the biggest legal question facing the industry, are cryptocurrency transactions considered securities? Massachusetts Senate candidate John Deaton, who's fighting to unseat Elizabeth Warren in November, filed an amicus brief today in support of Coinbase his appeal and he joins me now along with our own Charlie Gasparino. Uh, Charlie, I'm going to bring you in first on this. You've been covering this. Yeah, and I'm going to bring John in because uh, he's the guy people want to hear from, not me, especially on this. John, you know, you know, we're going to get into the amicus brief and Coinbase in a minute, but you know, I got to ask you about this campaign. How's it going? How are you raising money? Obviously being associated with crypto as much as you are, you know, you're kind of a folk hero, particularly to the XRP community, has is, is helped you raise money. Is it working in polling and, and all that? Well, thanks, Charlie, and thanks for having me. Listen, you know, uh, I've been a federal prosecutor, marine lawyer, 22, asbestos year, 22 years as asbestos lawyer, but they all want to pigeonhole me as a crypto lawyer. But I'll take it because I've been fighting, as you know, Charlie, for the individual retail holders, small investors. Campaign's going great. We outraised Elizabeth Warren in the first quarter, and I only had half the quarter. I've got voters coming up to me. I got Democrats, unenrolled, Republicans, all excited about this race. I'm going to unseat Senator Warren, trust me. We got to get rid of Gary Gensler, and the industry's got to do that, and I'm going to take care of uh, the senior senator from Massachusetts. Okay, I, and I know people in the crypto world, not saying me, would say your lips to God's ears, but you got to win first. And, you know, one thing, John, I would say, I mean, you, you know, I've sat down plenty of times. I, I know you're more than just crypto, but what is your campaign about? I mean, what, what are your main, I mean, what do you care about, and what, 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 what makes you... You know, differentiate yourself a little here between you and Elizabeth Warren. Well, I actually think that Elizabeth Warren is the crypto candidate, Charlie, because when I got in this race, I've represented for 22 years working families in Massachusetts. I've sat at their kitchen table. So I know what the issues are. Illegal immigration, a debt crisis, an opioid crisis, housing shortage and, and pricing issues. We've got inflation on prescription drugs and groceries, foreign wars that are on the taxpayer's wallet. All of that's going on, and Elizabeth Warren is focused on crypto. I'm focused on those issues, and so that's what the campaign's about. We have a crisis in this country, Charlie, a crisis of leadership of Washington elites like Senator Warren dividing this country, and I'm going to show the voters there's a different way to do it. There's a way to do it that uplifts people, not tear them down, and I can't wait to do it. You know, John, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, jump in here for a second because I think uh, this question of, of what cryptocurrency is, you know, the brief that you filed, I mean, where do you come down on this? Well, I come down on the fact that American innovation should be regulated safely and mm -hmm. securely, but you don't ban new technology that's disruptive, right? And when you look at the Elizabeth Warren's latest bill, mm. it was written by the Banking Institute Policy of the United States. That's the senator who promised to go hold the bankers accountable, and now they're writing her bills. Mm. And so whether cryptocurrency is a good asset or it's going to fulfill its promise, we don't know yet. It's not about crypto. It's about freedom. And I got involved because we had an SEC that had its neck 
on American innovation and the individual retail holders were the ones, you know, getting uh, screwed over to be yeah. to be candid. And I hey, did John, something about John, it. John, let me ask you. Let, let me ask you this. Uh, what type of Republican are you? Are you a MAGA Republican? Are you a conservative, you know, old school conservative Republican? You're certainly not a country club Republican. <laughs> I've been with you. You're an ex-Marine. And uh, explain your, your political philosophy a little bit. Listen, I am a centrist, moderate Republican. Uh, Massachusetts voters, uh, they know someone, former Republican Governor Charlie Baker. If you had to compare me to someone, you could compare me to him, a centrist person, fiscally responsible, socially moderate. <laughs> But I'm my own person. There's no candidate like me, and that's why Elizabeth Warren keeps talking about me. Charlie, you did a segment on why oh, yeah. is she so afraid of me. We're going to find <laughs> out she why she's afraid. You? Yeah. What did you is say? She, is she going to debate? John, is she going to debate you? She's going to have to debate me. She debated the last two candidates. She's going to debate me. And right now, I'm issuing a challenge. Let's have at least three to five debates, Senator Warren. Wow. Let's give the the people a real chance to compare our credentials. She won't do it because she knows she's going to lose that comparison every time. Quite a challenge. Gentlemen, we are going to have to leave it there. Charlie Gasparino, John Deaton, appreciate your time today. Thank you. Hello. My name is Montague William III. And what I will tell you may well sound absurd, but the less who believe it, the better for me. For you see, I'm in banking and a big industry. For many a year we have controlled your lives, while you all just struggle and suffer in strife. We created the things that you don't really need, your, your sports cars and fashions and plasma TVs. I remember it clearly how all this begun. Family secrets from father to son. Inherited knowledge that gives me the edge while you peasant people lie sleeping at night in your bed. We control the money that controls your lives. Whilst you worship false idols and wouldn't think twice about selling your souls for a place in the sun, these things that won't matter when your time is done. But as long as they're there to control the masses, I just sit back and consider my assets, safe in the knowledge that I have it all, while you common people are losing your jobs. You see, I just hold you in utter contempt. But the smile on my face, well, it makes me exempt, for I have the weapon of global TV which gives us connection and invites empathy. You would really believe that we look out for you, while we bankers and brokers are only a few. But if you saw that, you'd take back the power. Hence, daily terrors to make you all cower, the panics, the crashes, the wars, and the illness that keep you from finding your spiritual wholeness. We rig the game, and we buy out both sides to keep you enslaved in your pitiful lives. Over time, your money gets you less. Does Bitcoin? Well, in 2012, one Bitcoin bought you this much pizza. In 2016, this much pizza. In 2020, this much pizza. And in 2024, well, you get the gist. Roughly every four years, the future supply of Bitcoin is reduced. So historically, you get more, not less. So what is money and how does it get value? Paper money has value because someone says so. Bitcoin is different. It's like digital gold. It has value for many of the reasons gold does, but that's only the start. Gold originally had value because it was scarce, but no one knows how much is left to dig up. Bitcoin, on the other hand, has a limited supply, 21 million, and it can never be counterfeited. Every day, more people are buying it, making it more scarce, making it more valuable. But you can also split it up because every Bitcoin is divisible by a lot. Each Bitcoin can be split into 100 million smaller units. So if one Bitcoin was worth $1 million, the smallest unit, called a Satoshi, would be worth one penny. So you can send whatever amount you want, and no one can stop
stop you because no central authority controls it. So unlike with banks and credit card companies, you don't need approval to use it. And no one can decide to just print more or shut it down. It puts the power back in all our hands. Bitcoin lets you control your finances. Kraken lets you buy Bitcoin. Kraken, see what crypto can be. Pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack.